We got a game that on paper doesn't seem that exciting. But I think this actually might be a decent matchup just because how close the teams are there. And, I think so. There's a couple yeah. that's good on uh, this week. And that's the Steelers at the Falcons here. So we got the Steelers and the Dirty Bird there. And so we got the Falcons of the home team. They're uh, a three and a half point favorite there. You got a 42 on the over under. I'm taking it this time first, Rob. Do last time. So <laughs> that's it. The Falcons guys are one of those teams that I really think is going to be a good team this year. And I would say out of the blue, but let's be honest, they shouldn't be out of the blue. They've been basically a 500 team with extremely mediocre quarterback play. Extre- well, that's very nice about it because mediocre is. I'm trying to put it nicely. Like, I mean, yeah. like, you know, Riddler was horrible. Um, you know, even t- Taylor Heineke looked better when he was in DC than he did when he's in Atlanta. You know, it just hasn't been good. And now they got Kirk Cousins, who is the king of playing Vanilla. above average. <laughs> like, he's not going to ever be an elite quarterback. He's an above average quarterback, though. Yeah. He's, it's until the postseason comes at least. But in the regular season, he is a, you know, a really good quarterback that puts up some stats there. So I think that you'll see a really good Falcon team this year. And it sounds weird to say that, a really good Falcon team, but the division's up for grabs. You know, the Saints are mediocre. The Bucks, even though they played better down the stretch last year, were pretty mediocre, let's be honest. The Panthers were the worst team in the league last year and didn't make any major splash moves. Unless their quarterback makes a huge jump, they're probably going to be one of the worst teams again. So, the Falcons have a chance here to really do something in this division and take that divisional crown. And I think they'll end up possibly doing it, but they're going to start this week by beating the Steelers, who from all reports, Russell Wilson has not looked good. Neither has Fields. And Fields has looked like a wide receiver. (laughs) Yeah. They literally practiced my wide receiver, I heard one day. So, I mean, that's, that's where we're at. So until I see, again, not saying excellent quarterback play, but at least mediocre. It's hard to get around bad quarterback play in this league. So if the Steelers aren't going to have a good quarterback, then I don't care how good a coach Tomlin is. I can't expect it to be above average team. Well, And I have a lot of respect for him as a coach, not necessarily as a person. I got some issues there with him. But as a coach, he's as good as it gets. I think Falcons win this game. I think they covered the spread no problem at all. Uh, I actually have the over on the points because I think the Falcons are going to put up some points, guys. I really do. I think you're going to see Pitts and London all of a sudden being what people thought they'd be coming out of college and having a big year. I think this this team's going to put up some points. Don't forget the double-headed monster they got two with Bajan Robinson and Tyler Ajir, two at running back. Like This is a team that's got some weapons, guys. It's not like they had nobody on offense. They just didn't have the one person they need, a quarterback. And now they have a quarterback. Granted, not my favorite quarterback, but a quarterback. And let's say hypothetically, if he stinks it up this year for whatever reason, gets injured again, they got one of my favorite draft picks there on the bench, even though I still think they did him dirty by drafting him. But they still 100%. have him on the bench. So, yeah, Falcons going to have a big year, guys. I really do think so. And Falcons, I got one of this game and, and covered. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot what you said. And I, you got to give respect where respect is due. Steelers always figure out how to figure out to be 500 or better. Like it's amazing that Tomlin's done that his whole, the whole 10 years, you know, the Steeler uh, coach, but I have the Falcons win this game. I do think they are going to be, I don't want to say an offense juggernaut, but they will be putting up points. Yep. Uh, their defense is something you didn't bring up. They were a very solid defense oh, last yeah. year. They weren't like, Top three, but they were up there, and that's top ten. Hot. Yeah, that's how they won games. See, they were slow playing the offense, and let the defense yeah, rest up, and they just stopped the ball. And low scoring games, very boring games they played last year. Well, now you got an offense that could put up some points and stop other teams. So, I don't think, like, I think they could win the division. They have a very strong case to win the division against uh, maybe second place to the Bucks, but probably winning that division. They probably don't reach ten wins. Like that's kind of the cap over there. I imagine and, think it's really going to be. I think ten wins is where they be. Ten and seven, think, I think, is realistic. Yeah, may, may, maybe nine, nine or ten wins, which is fair to say. And I do think they cover this in this game, but I don't. I don't think the Steelers' offense has put it together yet and figured no. it out. 
And that that'd be better. Eat yeah, up. Stretch uh, yes, I agree. And Kirk Cousins also coming off that injury. So I don't think they're going to be that juggernaut an offense this game. So I went with the under more so because I don't have faith in the Steelers to put up a lot of points in this game. So when you beat a team, you know, 24 to 7, oh, you're going to go to the under. <laughs> like it's going to be the under. You're expecting a full on blowout. I should say too. One thing I didn't mention. I should have said blowout. I'm just saying like a low score game. One thing I didn't mention also besides just the the defense as a whole, which you're right. I mean the defense was was good, though I I think they will miss Clay's Campbell a little bit there. As old as he was, he was a really good player for him last year. Raheem Morris should be mentioned as well as the new head coach there for the Falcons. I really think that the uh, that was a good coaching hire. You know, he did a good job in, in, in Tampa Bay and started getting the ball rolling a little bit years ago, and they never gave him a full chance to shine. He goes a interim head coach for the Falcons in the past, and then goes over to Sean McVay at that point. It's like, he's, yeah. this, this guy's, I'm telling you right now, this is a leader. And I don't think he's ever had the team with him around him to get him the what you need to get to stay longevity wise in this in this league as a head coach. Like I said, he's, he's got some, he's got some talent here. It should be a good year for the Falcons. So, if you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Please, please subscribe. <laughs>